Welcome to Sculpture Studios, another fantastic addition here to the Norfolk Heritage Arts Trail. Originally commissioned as the Spitfire Project back in 2015, and 2016 seeing the return of the Arts Trail with the Tornado Fighter Jets, we've been contacted once again by Pauline Petch, Flight Lieutenant of the 42 Squadron Air Cadet Training Corps in Kings Lynn. Here we're contributing new models to this year's run, the Lockheed F-35 Lightning II and the Victor Bomber. If you've seen our other videos for the planes we've made in the past, you should know the drill by now. We're starting with outlines in order to create a master pattern, then taking a production mould and creating replica casts in glass fibre. We might need a better outline than that for this one, as there are sure to be some experts out there and we don't want to get shot down. Though we're only really going to be showing the process of the lightning, as the bomber's literally going to be made in the same way, just a different shape, you can see some fantastic artwork of all four models as a finale to the video. These are being painted and decorated by the various schools and organisations sponsoring the planes at the other end. Now, no doubt we're going to hear the usual responses of, oh, why don't you just get this 3D printed or 5-axis cut? But anyone can take this to a 3D company to be put into a computer and simply press the print button. We don't want to let down all the folks out there that appreciate the handmade touch and the poly carving process, so this video is no exception. Also, by taking a fully rendered and in a way anatomically correct model to the 3D printers, they're literally going to replicate every single nuance. This means every rivet, join in the metal wing plating, the gaps between the wing flaps, and everything else that goes into the plane detailing, this simply wouldn't be suitable for the project. Not only does all of this detail then need to be achieved and cleaned up in the moulding and casting, and trust me, when you're replicating over 20 times it gets tiresome, but this will be really awkward to paint over when it comes to the artwork. We're creating an agreed, simplified blank canvas version that lends itself much more to the nature of the project. Another aspect of the work that people don't always necessarily take into consideration, and it's probably one of the most important aspects for us, is the timing. We can create this far quicker here in the studio, by hand, than having this sent away to be 3D cut or 3D printed. Now, I'm not saying it's not a groundbreaking process, I know it's accurate, it looks amazing sped up, but let's just take a look at 3D printing by conventional means in real time. Yeah, this object is 10 centimetres tall and it takes over an hour. And look at those lines! Do you want to clean that up, sanding down plastic by hand? No, I didn't think so. We can create the object in just a few short days, rather than waiting a few weeks for a 3D print or a 3D cut process, which will most likely need to be cleaned up at the end anyway. Not only does this allow us to retain control as we keep everything in the studio, but carving by hand also feels like more of a reveal, like the stonemasons of old, just with expanded polystyrene bead material instead. We also enjoy the carving process, especially Aiden, which at the end of the day, let's face it, as long as the boss is happy then that's all that matters. The usual hot wire and the hot wire table is busted out to cut the foam into its block form, but the rest is all done freehand. As well as drawings, we do have a small replica model here in the studio, as it always helps having a physical, 3D object in your hand to refer to. Aiden starts working with a wire brush, a very basic tool for carving, to start shaping the master pattern. The main thing of course is, as well as generally looking like the design of the F-35, is that both sides are as symmetrical as possible. The simplified version of the plane we're creating is intentional, a lopsided plane on the other hand is not, so it's something we need to make sure we get right. With the shape now complete, a light water-based plaster render is applied onto the polystyrene and is sanded back to a smooth finish. This loses the polystyrene bead texture, as the silicon mould we'll be creating will literally pick out any detail left on the model. This process is repeated until we're happy with the overall surface. On to the mould making now, no the plane hasn't crash landed in mud, we're creating a perimeter of clay around the entire shape to form the halfway split line. We're going to be using silicon rubber for this mould, built up in multiple layers to result in a really strong but flexible rubber insert. A fibreglass jacket will be made for the outside so the mould retains its shape and this process is repeated on both sides of the model to create the two complete halves. 
The tail fins are being made separately and individually attached to each cast, and this is another reason why we keep the master pattern as simplified as possible. Additionally, any armament that would have been on the plane would have resulted in a much lengthier process and would have been far less affordable for the client. Once the materials have set and the master pattern's been removed from the inside, each cast is made up by first applying a gel coat of resin into the mould for a smooth exterior surface. We're using a white gel coat as this will provide a nice base layer for the white primer that's going on top later. We back the gel coat up with multiple layers of glass fibre and once extracted from the mould, each cast needs to be trimmed so the two halves will join neatly together. In the same position on the bottom of every cast, we've installed bolt mounting points so that each plane can be set up on a pole or a street lamppost and positioned accordingly. All of the casts then need to be cleaned up, filled with car body filler and sanded down in places where there might be any imperfections in the gel coat. Over the last few years, what with the multiple projects commissioned by Pauline Petch, naturally we see a lot more of her as she pops down to the studio from King's Lynn. Nowadays though, it's more than just a business visit, and more of a visit for a catch-up as well. Here we've invited Pauline and some of her younger cadets down to the studio just to get a feel for what we do as a bit of an experience related to the art trail itself. As well as being talked through the different processes behind making these planes, they were given a little hands-on time to create a few pieces of their own just to get a feel for the work. Aiden obviously just goes around annoying everyone once the ice has been broken. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> You're not to look up, right? What happens? Don't look up, right? Oh no, I'll tell you what, if you um if you could flip that over. Excuse me, if you could just flip. Are you good, isn't he? <laughs> now, what did I just say? Don't look at the camera. And what does mom do? Play. We actually need to take a moment to say a big thank you to Pauline herself for not only approaching us with the work at the beginning of the Spitfire project, but for coming back to us every year since and really pushing these projects forward. Money is raised for charity from such efforts, and it all goes down to hard work and dedication, so it's great that this is something you really strive to make happen. We're going over with a 2K car body primer, as this will be a nice strong finish for the artwork to go on top of. I mean, I've lost count of how many plane models we've made at this stage, I'm not going to lie. As soon as Pauline had another school or an organisation on board, normally after they'd seen the success of the trail the year before, we got a call with a commission to make a few more. The Victor Bombers were being created at around the same time as the Lightnings, and this gave each of the sponsors a choice of one of four plane models to choose from. Here you can see some of the brilliant ways in which the planes turned out. Oh, rule Britannia, Britannia rule the waves. And these were dotted all over Norfolk at the various airfields involved in World War II. Aidan's taken a trip up to RAF Marham in Kings Lynn, where the trail is being announced, and to see firsthand what some of the planes turned out like. This is a great representation of the county's legacy and a fantastic charity cause, as eventually, once the trail's over, these planes will all be auctioned off, no doubt with many people wanting to buy the plane they artwork themselves. The F-35 Lightnings, the Tornadoes, the Victor Bombers, and of course the good old Spitfires from the very first project are all on display, some models resurrected and some created brand new. Aidan had a stowaway in the back of the van, but no doubt the cadets were all pleased with the extra visitor. As well as needing discipline to be in the core, this is a great event to be able to let your hair down, so Rocky's definitely doing that. <laughs> There'll always be another art trail project in the future, and hopefully one of these will be for Kings Lynn, Pauline Petch and the 42 Squadron Air Cadet Training Corps, and the Norfolk Heritage Arts Trail. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.